rare and 100% genetic, neurodegenerative and an ultimately fatal late onset disease with currently no therapy. About 1 in 20,000 people live with Huntington's disease today. Huntington's disease, there's a particular gene that is being affected, there's a genetic mutation, it's, it's called an expansion mutation. We know that there is a specific expansion within this gene that generates a mutant protein. Over time, this protein leads to cell death in the brain. In the region of the brain called the stratum, specific neurons are dying. This causes motor defects, problems with a person's ability to think, behave and move. After typically striking a person in the prime of their life between the ages of 30 and 50, eventually it leads to death within 10 to 15 years. A lot of the studies in the past 20, 30 years focused on post-symptomatic. We believe that it's too late. We need to go much earlier because the, the disease is already there, the genetics is there. So we need to understand the very early stages much before the disease is already Occurring. Each child of a parent with Huntington's has a 50% chance of inheriting the disease, affecting men and women equally. Today, clinical diagnosis is made when movement problems are obvious. The particular neurons in the brain that are dying, why they are dying and not other uh, neurons. We don't understand why it takes years for the disease to develop. When the genes mutated in Huntington's, it starts forming aggregates, cellular structures in the cell. We're asking ourselves, when do these cellular aggregates appear? When does the protein become insoluble and generate these deposits? When does it occur? Why does it occur? In which cells? And what sticks to it? All these questions is what Professor Iran Mesherer is trying to answer, something he can follow using a microscope at the Hebrew University's Edmund and Lily Safra Center for Brain Sciences. He's using human stem cell models to study the very early stages of the disease before it happens, to see the first molecular changes, the biological alterations in the disease cells, to understand what's really going on. My lab is trying to generate human models for brain diseases. To do that, he needs stem cells from patients. He uses human embryonic cells from early embryos that are about one week old from IVF, or takes cells from skin or blood biopsies and reprograms them to become stem cells. These stem cells can become any cell type. So then we need to basically generate brain models so the stem cells give us access to human brain-like tissue because we can turn these cells into these brain organoids, into brain cells, into human neurons. One of the things still yet to be understood is finding mechanisms by which the mutant protein causes disease. One of the experiments that we've done, we've analyzed the proteins that bind the mutated gene. And we find that some of these proteins shouldn't even be there. So this is one of the things that we believe is causing uh, the disease in the long run. The incentive eventually is to come up with novel compounds, new drugs, new pathways that will lead to therapy.